these are notes for the energy unit and these notes don't go to a particular worksheet they're just the beginning notes so energy and thermochemistry these are the sections we'll cover and these in section one we'll look at these objectives you can read through those on your own note page and in this unit we're going to learn about the nature of heat energy and fire how to keep track of and measure energy changes the source of energy and chemical changes how chemical energy is transformed into work about energy changes during reactions with metals and ionic compounds so energy the universe is made up of matter and energy what is energy it is not matter it is not a substance you cannot see energy you cannot hold it in your hand energy is associated with change so the definition of energy the ability to cause change in the form of work or heat energy can be measured as a transfer from one substance to another it cannot be directly measured the big idea changes in matter are accompanied by changes in energy for example a forest fire matter is drastically changed into carbon dioxide and or carbon monoxide and h2o combustion in a car engine the energy from combustion is transformed into mechanical energy to move the car so a big idea about heat heat is the transfer of energy between two objects due to a difference in temperature heat transfers from the higher to the lower temperature so from the hot to the cold the system is the matter you are focusing on for example a hot pack calcium chloride dissolves in water the surroundings are everything else so the hot pack example the packaging your hand the surrounding air and the rest of the universe are considered to be the surroundings. Yes, the whole universe. Exothermic versus endothermic. Exothermic changes are ones in which energy is released or associated with the product side of a reaction. The products are hotter than the reactants, tend to feel an increase in heat. Endothermic changes are associated with an absorption of energy. The products are colder than the reactants. They tend to feel a decrease in heat. Examples. Exothermic, combustion of gasoline, dissolving of a substance in a hot pack, dissolving of sodium hydroxide or hydrochloric acid in water, they release quite amount of heat. Endothermic, dissolving of a substance in a cold pack, an ice cube melting. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Temperature is a reflection of the average kinetic energy of a substance. Boiling water has more kinetic energy than an ice cube. The kinetic energy released in the reaction between oxygen and hydrogen is used to launch the space shuttle. Potential energy is stored energy. A rock on a cliff, adipose tissue, gas in the tank of a car, a diver on a diving board, heat transfer. Three types of heat transfer, conduction, convection, radiation. So we'll look at conduction. It's the transfer of heat between neighboring molecules. Example, water in a pot getting warmed from the heat of the surrounding pot. Convection is the movement of matter. Convection can occur in liquids and gases. Warm air rises. Warm water rises to the top. It's less dense. Think of a convection oven. Radiation. Electromagnetic waves transfer energy from an energy source. Examples. The sun for cell phones or radioactive particles. How is heat transferred? Heat transfers from the hotter substance to the colder substance. There's no such thing as a cold transfer. If we experienced cold, heat is being transferred away from our bodies. For example, your hand gets cold when you hold an ice cube because heat is moving from your hand to the ice cube. Thermal equilibrium. When two substances at different temperatures and when touching reach the same temperature. I didn't say that very well. So when two substances at different temperatures, they touch one another, they reach the same temperature. Both substances have the same kinetic energy. Examples, ice in a glass of water, ice, an iceberg in the ocean, cold cream poured into coffee. Thermodynamics is the study of heat transfer. We'll look at two laws of thermodynamics. The first law is the conservation of energy. The second law is that energy disperses. The first law, energy is always conserved, cannot lose energy or create it. Energy can only be transferred, energy changes form. Examples, potential energy in a tank of gas in a car is changed into mechanical energy through the combustion of the spark plug. Second law of thermodynamics, energy tends to disperse or spread out. Entropy is another key word associated with the second law. Entropy is a measure of disorder. Things tend towards disorder. 
Examples, an open bottle of perfume disperses throughout a room. It does not collect back into the bottle. The smell in the yard waste container. Oh, my yard waste container. The paper in your notebook or the clothes in your bedroom. Heat versus temperature. Heat is a process of energy transfer to or from something. Temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy of a substance. So thermal energy is the total amount of energy in the particles of a substance. Thermal energy depends upon the temperature and the number of particles in a sample. Heat, temp, and thermal energy. So one liter of 100 degrees Celsius water has more thermal energy than one liter of 50 degrees Celsius water. The temperature is higher in the boiling water. The molecules are moving much faster, more kinetic energy. One liter of 85 degrees Celsius water has more thermal energy than a half a liter of 85 degrees Celsius because there's more mass. Same temperature but different thermal energies. Units of energy. We'll look at two units of energy, the calorie and the joule. One calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. This unit of energy is based on the heat transferred to or from water. It's written as one calorie per gram degree Celsius. Calories and joules. Joule is the metric unit to measure energy. It's named after James Prescott Joule. He worked under Dalton. Joule's work formed the basis for the first law of thermodynamics. The abbreviation is a big J. A joule is 4.184 times larger than a calorie. So one calorie equals 4.184 joules, most commonly used. A joule, the converse of it, equals 0.239 calories. So joules are the most commonly used form of energy. Calories, however, are on our food labels in the US, and they are really kilocalories. I guess we'd be scared by a kilocalorie if it was on there. For example, two gummy bear vitamins have 15 calories according to the container. Really, they have 15 kilocalories, which is 15,000 calories. That would knock me out. It's not appetizing <laughs> that a donut really has 250,000 calories. Holy moly. So one donut is 250 kilocalories. A 60-pound girl biking at 10 miles per hour burns one-tenth of the donut per mile. Not a lot. One of the fastest solar cars would use one-eighth of a donut per mile. A Suburban would use 11 donuts per mile. <laughs> measuring heat transfer. The equation for measuring heat transfer is Q equals SM delta T. It's called Q SMAT. Q is the amount of heat transferred in calories or joules. M is the mass, and it's in grams, and delta T is the change in temperature in degrees Celsius. S is specific heat, and it's in calories per gram degree Celsius. And you usually look at a table for that. You can use this equation to determine the amount of heat transferred, the specific heat of a substance, the mass of a substance, or change in temperature. So specific heat capacity refers to the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of a substance by one degree Celsius. Every substance has a specific heat capacity. The specific heat is different for different states of matter, a solid, liquid, or gas. See examples below. All the units are in calories per gram degree Celsius. So aluminum has 0.2, liquid water is 1, copper is 0.09, Solid iron is 0.11, nitrogen gas 0.24, hydrogen gas 3.34. Here's a chart for you. So what does specific heat mean? The greater the specific heat capacity of a substance, the less its temperature will rise when it absorbs a given amount of energy. A low specific heat means a substance will easily change its temperature. A high specific heat means that it will take more energy into or out of to change the temperature. So I think so how many calories of energy does it take to heat 70, a 75 milliliter sample of water from 25 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius? You're going to use QSMAT. One gram of water is one milliliter of water, so we could say we have 75 grams. S is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. You get that from a chart or you just memorize it. And the change in temperature is the final minus the initial, so 38 minus 25 is 13. And you plug it in. You get your one calorie, 75 grams, 13 degrees Celsius is 975 calories of heat transferred in the water. Calculations with mixtures of water. I think we need to end our notes here. Let's see. Yeah, we need to end our notes there, and we will start new with that for the next set of notes. Sorry for the jumbly, bumbly ending.